Good morning. This is Lainey from Camp Joy Farms. It's Wednesday, January 12th. We have been busy the last couple of days, had to run some errands and doctor's appointments and things like that. So today I feel like I just need to hit the ground running. I feel so far behind the eight ball, as I said in my last video. It's, it's only January, but yet I just feel so far behind. I feel like there's so many things that I could get done now to try to save me time on the back end and things come to me sometimes i'm just laying in bed at night and i think of something i need to add to my list so before it gets dark before the day is too gone i want to try to get out here and knock out a couple of things that are important to me things that might seem simple and might seem like oh you could do that in five minutes you know later on in the spring but what i like to do is cross things off my list i like to know they're done i sleep better at night when that happens and i just don't want a lot of things crowding me out when it comes time to actually lay drip tape to fertilize when it comes time to actually start planting things in the ground i don't want these little menial chores to be on my mind and uh, i wake up on a, a a saturday morning or something and say you know oh, i want to get all this planting done today and realize oh but first i have to do this this and this and next thing you know half the day's gone before you ever get a seed in the ground and that happens to me and maybe it's just me, but it happens a lot. And so I've kind of learned that if I can just think things through and write things down and um, tick them off my list, that it gives me some more peace. It makes me feel accomplished. It makes me feel like when spring comes, I'm gonna be a little bit more ready. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. Uh, this is the first thing I'm gonna do. Let me show you. I put some buckets in the back of my four wheeler side by side. I have five buckets. And I really needed six buckets. So I'm borrowing my little grandson's wheelbarrow. <laughs> That's gonna make my six bucket. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these to the other side of our property and fill them with sand or fill them a good ways with sand. I wanna make it to where they're just stable to where they don't blow over in the wind because I'm going to make these be a little fence around my garden. I'll tell you about it while we ride. Okay, we have two yellow lab dogs very sweet they're good dogs but they love to run through my gardens when my son takes them out in the evening so when they're out during the day with us the first thing they do is head to my gardens and uh, make little pit stops run right through my plants if I have something growing and I just don't want that to happen this year I don't want them running through especially my upper garden I'm going to kind of treat it this year as like a cottage garden I'm going to grow a lot of things in it but I'm going to kind of enclose it with pole beans and uh, other posts and things for tomatoes. And I just don't want the dogs running through there all the time and tramping over everything. I just don't want them to do it. I love them, but this year, Mama's Garden is going to be Mama's Garden. So I'm going to fill these buckets with sand, and then I'm going to put them at uh, the corners and along the side of my garden. And I'm gonna run uh, just some jute string from bucket to bucket to make a little loop all the way around my garden. Now you might think, well, that doesn't really do a whole lot, but actually it does. I have a little small garden on the side of my house. I call it my herb garden, but I don't really grow herbs in it. I just grow um, kale and uh, last year I grew okra and some things like that. And they used to love it. The minute you would let them out, they would go run straight to that garden and get in it and tear it up. So, I, all I did was I put some little wooden posts and I put some string through uh, some little uh, silver eyelets on top of the posts. And that's it. They quit going in the garden. They just, uh, that string deters them. They don't tend to go past it or anything. So rather than spend a lot of money and spend a lot of time putting some kind of fencing around my garden, I'm just going to uh, put the string around there with some buckets. Sometimes you, you overthink things and you want to do it good and you don't end up doing it as cheap as you could. <laughs> right now I'm trying to get in the mindset of doing things as cheap as I can. Think them through and make sure they work, but still do them as cheap as possible. And I have the jute string. I had these buckets. I needed more buckets, but um, I don't have more right now, but I'll figure something out. I'm gonna use his little wheelbarrow just to make a bucket. And um, I'm gonna knock this problem out. I'm gonna set these buckets of sand in my shed. I'm not actually gonna put them around my garden right now, but the day I'm ready to put them around my garden, 
garden once I get my everything rowed up, once I get all my poles in there for pole beans and things like that. When I'm ready, the buckets will be there. They'll be done. That's off my list. I don't have to think about it anymore. So here we go. I'm not sure if we're blessed or cursed or what, but we have all of this sand on our property. This is on the other side of our little gravel road. You can see our, our property line post there. So from the property line post to the left towards the road is where we have a lot of sand on this side of our drive. Well, it's not really our driveway. It's just a little gravel road on the other side of our property. But anyway, I'm going to take some of this sand, put it in these buckets, and um, it'll be free. I love it. that's done I'm gonna head back to the shed and roll on to the next thing I've been missing one of my owls that uh, blew off my garden found it over here on the other side of the road so I'm gonna grab that thing I did when we were running errands is I ran by Tractor Supply and I've got, uh, let's see, I got seven new T-posts. You can tell the white ones there on the end. Five and a half foot T-posts. I pretty much nailed down my garden layout and everything and I figured out exactly how many T-posts I needed. I went ahead and got two extra. I needed five more but I got two extra. But that saves me a lot of time rather than getting out here on a work day, putting up all my posts and then realizing I was five short. I, you know, just little things like that can just send you to the store. They can send you on a half a day running around. We live rurally, so, you know, it's not even an easy chore to go to a tractor supply and get some posts. So I went ahead and counted, figured out and procured them already. So that can tick that off my list and it really feels good. Another thing that I want to do that's on my list. This is actually my greenhouse, my high tunnel. It is in my way and I want to get it out of where it's laying right now. It's just laying behind our shed near our trailers and it's lying just to the right of um, my upper garden where I worked on the dirt this weekend. So I want to take this and I want to move it over by the boards that I have. I have the boards over in another part of our yard covered with a tarp to keep them protected from the weather. I wanna go lay these units over there by those boards so that it'll be in one place if um, a customer comes to buy it. I'm trying to sell it right now and I really hope that it sells soon so that I can go ahead and get these both out of my yard and everything. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Thank goodness for my four-wheeler. I was able to get like one end up on the four-wheeler and then use it as leverage to get the other end up. Got a little bit of it moved still got a good bit of the pile to go so I gotta get going all right well I got it over there I got the whole pile moved it makes me feel better kind of wish I could have stacked it a little better but it was not very light I'm not the greatest with arm strength I did the best I could I kind of crawfished it up onto the four-wheeler used it as leverage as I said and then got the rest of it up there but coming down some of it kind of came down where it wanted to so there it is it's all together should someone buy it you know it's it'll be a lot easier to load on a trailer and just back the trailer right up to this so i'm going to scratch that off my list and let me go see what else i can do all right let's talk water hoses this is the faucet on the southwest side of our house and what i have is a splitter that comes off of my water hose you know you can buy these at the hardware store this side we're not going to worry about right now. That's going to go to my garden at the beach, but I'm not worried about that right at the moment. This side right here, I'm going to follow this hose 
and this is what is going to my upper and lower gardens. Now this hose runs all the way across my backyard. And what it's doing is it has to run to a splitter. And then I'm gonna split off to my upper garden and split off to my lower garden and run a drip tape system. So my hose has to run a pretty good bit of ways. We have to move it every time my son mows, but it's really the only thing I can do right now. All right, I kind of laid it out so you could see. What I'll have to do is take this splitter and I'm gonna hook it to that hose there that comes from my house. Everybody I'm sure knows how to work these things. I'm just kind of explaining what I'm doing for my system. Then I'll hook another water hose onto it. Doesn't matter which one of these, just say that one. And when I'm ready to water that garden, I just turn that valve that way, turn it that way so that water goes out into the hose. All right. And then we'll follow that hose right over here it's kind of windy. Follow it. And this is my drip tape stuff that I had I uh, used two years ago. So I've got a, uh, it's fine. I mean, I can use it, but it's a little bit dirty. But uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is this end will screw into my drip tape system. My water hose comes from my splitter. It'll screw into my drip tape system. And then I could go that way or that way with it because this is a little T they call it. I capped off that end. Last time I used this, I just went one direction with it. And what you'll do is um, this, will, this will fill up with water and, and fill up. It won't just lay there flat. But what you would do would be to attach, they call it lead line. I would attach some more lead line. I would have this lead line coming in, I would have one of my drip tape rows going this way. Then what I would do was would be attach a little more lead line, which I don't have at the moment, but I'm gonna get it. I would attach a little more lead line, and then my next uh, T would come in to play. My lead line would come in here. My drip tape that goes toward my row would go out here, and then I would put another lead line on here and keep going. And you would do that for however many rows you wanted to set up to put your drip tape on. Might seem a little complicated if you've never done it before, but once you do it once, it's not that hard. And then once you put your, your row that goes down your garden, you would cap it off at the other end down there so that water wouldn't just run out into wherever in your yard. You would have to cap it off. I usually tie it in a really, really, really good knot at that end down there. And then I also take one of the big, uh, well, I've got one right here, one of the big, large, office clips like you can get and I clip it as well and then I just do a walk every now and then and I walk along the end of those rows and I make sure that um, they're not leaking real bad or anything like that um, if it is leaking then you just know you need to tighten something or, or clamp it a little bit better there's different ways people suggest different things but those lines have a lot of pressure in them so you have to do something you know pretty sturdy to, to get them to not uh, leak at the other end but I had such good luck on my spring 2020 garden with putting the drip tape in that I really want to do that again this year. Um, plus for time reasons, I'll just be able to go turn my water hose on. I'll be able to go to that splitter, cut on whichever garden I want to um, water and just rock and roll with it. And I just explained how that's going to go through the splitter into the green hose to my upper garden. I just explained all that. And what I'll do is I'll hook this hose on here. I'll hook it there. And when I'm ready, I can turn the, the little nozzle, turn it on. You can turn them on and off as you want to. And turn it on. And then I'll straighten out this hose, run it down to my lower garden and hook up my drip tape system down there. So the drip tape system will go all along one end of your garden and split off and go down the rows. But your main source of the water is just right up here at this splitter. When you turn that little nozzle on and tell it you want water to go in that hose, it'll activate your whole system. You might have to wait a few minutes for it to all start showing up on your dirt, but it'll activate the whole system. It's so nice. 
and it's going to really be a big time saver for me in the spring so that I can focus more on weeding and harvesting and even preserving my food. If I'm not out here having to water all the time, it'll really help me a lot. And if you ever have a road that you just don't want to water, um, say it's on your melons and you don't want to water your melons because they're fixing to be ready to harvest and you want to kind of stop watering them a week or two early, you can just detach your, uh, your drip tape for that row or cap it off or whatever you want to do, clamp it to where the water won't go down it. So it's, uh, I try to kind of plan to put my melons to the outside in case I need to do that, but um, it's still in all, you can still make it to where you don't have that row activated anymore if you need to. But it's a very good system and I want to fool with these hoses now. I want to get them hooked to the splitters now. I want to make sure my hoses reach the garden now so that I'm not having to fool with this on the day I'm out there working hard laying the drip tape because that's a job enough in itself and I don't want to wait till the spring and find out I don't have enough hoses or they're not long enough etc. So that's what I'm doing right now. Another thing checked off my list. Okay for my garden across the beach a few minutes ago I asked you to ignore this hose and I'm still going to ask you to do that because that big old hose laying there has nothing to do with uh, my watering system for the beach. But off of this nozzle right here, there will be a hose. And let me walk over here and show you. It's a big old mess. I haven't picked it up since last year. I did bring it back across the beach, but I didn't roll it up. Probably fixing to do that in a few minutes. But anyway, this big old snake looking mess here is about 300 feet of water hose. I run a single line of hose. I have to hook a few together, but I run a single line of hose all the way across that beach to the left of that dirt pile and past it is my, my other garden. What I did last year is I ran that single hose all the way across the beach and then there's my splitter. The hose came into the splitter and then it split off into these two hoses and each one of those hoses last year went to one of these tripod sprinklers. Two different brands. I guess I'm not even going to say the names of the brands right now. Hated both of them. Neither one of them worked very well and they were not cheap. Never going to do that again. Um, maybe other people really love them. I don't know, but I had terrible luck with them. And I don't want to do overhead watering this year anyway. So those are going to be stuck in the shed. I hate to throw them away, but they're going to be stuck in the shed. And what I'll do is at the point where these two hoses split, well, I'm probably only going to need one next year. I'll need one. That hose, whenever I turn the, turn the little nozzle on, that hose will go to drip irrigate that garden. So I'll do the same thing over there that I'm doing at these two gardens over here. And between all that, I can just go to that faucet right there, turn it on. I can control these little knobs to let uh, my system know which hoses I want to use. And that's it. And that takes so much pressure off of me to have to walk around with sprinklers and do things like that, like I did in the fall. Um, I just got lazy with my drip tape at the end of uh, 2020 and I did never end up putting it in and all at all in 2021 for different reasons and it is so much extra work to have to deal with sprinklers or to just have to worry about rain if you don't want to deal with sprinklers but you're having to worry about rain so this year I'm definitely using the drip tape so that officially takes several things off my list right after I roll up this hose okay I got that rolled up that's the pile that goes with the hoses and all that go to my garden by the beach the splitter's on there, the hoses are on there. I took one hose off because I'm only going to need one to go to this drip tape system. And so it's ready to go. And as soon as the spring gets here, all I have to do is stretch that out. The next thing I was going to do that's really designed to save me time, believe it or not, is my sister had given me this shelf the other day. It came out of their uh, storage shed. They gave me two of them. I said in another video the other day that I'm using uh, the, the other one that they gave me to start my seeds on. This one's a little narrow and two grow lights won't fit across uh, the width of this. It's kind of narrow. So I chose the other shelf to use for my grow lights and all. But anyway, this one of course is a little rusty. I mean, it's clean, they cleaned it, but it's, it's rusty. So I bought this little brush the other day at uh, the store, not expensive or anything. 
I'm gonna knock the big chunks off and just kind of rub it, see what I can do, and dust it off. And then what I'm doing with this is I've decided I'm gonna try to see if I can fit it on the back wall of my washroom and I'm gonna use it for extra storage, which you would think, well, that makes sense. Why is that saving you time? But it actually is because when you get in the heart of harvest season and you get in the heart of uh, pressure canning and putting up food and things like that, sometimes half the battle is just not knowing what to do with it once you've done it. You end up with 16 quarts of something, you know, and it's like, where am I gonna put this? <laughs> where is it going? And I don't wanna end up with all that on my counter. I don't want it to become clutter in my kitchen because that just doesn't, uh, I don't rest good at night when I have clutter everywhere. So uh, these shelves are gonna help me a lot. What I'm gonna do, I think with these, is take things that I have like um, washing powder and some different things like that that are more utilitarian and I'm gonna store them on these shelves. And then the places that I have that other stuff is more in more cabinetry and things like that. And that's where I'm gonna store a lot of the food that I might put up this year. So I want to know that I have empty spots to go put things once I can them, once I dehydrate them and things like that. I want to have a place to go put them. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel relaxed. It makes me feel confident that I'm not gonna have a big mess in my house. And that's why I'm gonna clean these shelves up and get that done. I won't have to worry about it come spring. I won't even have to think about it and it'll give me a lot of peace of mind. So that's on my list. I'm gonna check that off too. Trying to give you a little perspective here. On one side of my washroom is my freezer. And on the other side, in the corner, I put those shelves that I cleaned earlier. They got a little rust showing on them, but I don't care. They're serving their purpose. I decided instead of cleaning supplies, I was just gonna put some uh, canned goods that I have, things I pressure can. I actually had built a shelf above a hanging clothes rack. I had built a shelf about two years ago and I designed it specifically to where each of those squares, I could slide one of these cases with pint jars in it. But uh, some of them up there are from, were from 2020 and the new ones from 2021. So what I did was I decided to put those down here where they're a little more accessible to me. And I'm gonna really try hard. See, I've got them almost all to the bottom. I'm gonna really try hard to use up a lot, anything that says like 2020. And I'll try to eat up like purple hole peas from 2020. There's some more purple hole peas from 2020. So more pickles, I've got miscellaneous greens there. I've got kale, turnip greens, everything. And um, then I have like miscellaneous cow peas and lima beans and snap beans, different kinds of snap beans there from 2021. But I'll just use up this stuff first. Up there will go things that I pressure can from 2022. And that'll help me have a little rotation system. So it worked out really good. I'm proud of it. The last thing that I was going to do this evening, and it's been on my mind to do a while, uh, might sound kind of crazy, but I'm going to make up a large, large, large batch of biscuits and put them on trays and flash freeze them and put them in Ziplocs to put in my freezer. I cook breakfast every day. I mean, I'm the, I'm the cook around here and I have to, you know, cook breakfast every morning. I want my husband to eat a good breakfast every day. And we love good um, homemade biscuits. I love Hungry Jack biscuits too. I eat a lot of Hungry Jack biscuits, but uh, it's kind of gotten to where, you know, the little cans with five of the I think they call them Grands Junior or something now, but it's the Hungry Jack Biscuits. But a little um, can of like five biscuits at the store I shop at is $1.35 now. And sometimes maybe you can get them for 99 cents on sale, but still a dollar to $1.35 per can. And that's, um, sounds cheap, but it's really not. You know, for five biscuits, $1.35, the flour that I have in my freezer right now, I have about four or five bags of self-rising flour and I didn't pay but $1.99 a bag for that flour. So five pounds of flour and some shortening to go with it and a little milk to bind it together. And boom, I can make a bunch of biscuits and they're gonna come out to like pennies per biscuit. So I'm really trying to think of things, number one, to save some money. You know, I don't wanna always have to buy pre-made stuff at the store. 
if I can put up a lot of the biscuits on my own, just frozen in a bag, uh, in a Ziploc, I want to do that just to save some money. Uh, the Mrs. B's and the uh, Pillsbury biscuits that you can buy pre-made and frozen in the bag, the homemade style biscuits, those are like over $5 a bag for 20 biscuits, you know, and here I am with a whole five pound bag of flour for $1.99. So I can make a lot of biscuits for a lot cheaper than I can buy them at the store. But the main reason I'm wanting to do it right now is to save myself some time. Um, we don't eat biscuits every day. There's days we eat other things, but I do make them a lot. And I've gotten in the habit lately of making homemade biscuits a lot because my son really enjoys it and so does my husband. And when I do it, I make like a, a black iron skillet full of them and it might hold, you know, say 10 to 11 biscuits in the skillet. And so, and then I, you know, we might eat them. It might make it to where we can eat some on Saturday and some on Sunday. So it feeds us for two days. But, you know, the next weekend, if they're asking for biscuits again, I'm I'm back to making biscuits again. They're not hard to make, but it is like a repetitive thing that um, I do. And, and if I can kind of knock it out and just spend a little time one evening making up a big batch of those biscuits, cutting them with the biscuit cutter, putting them on a baking sheet, sticking them in the freezer, freezing them, and then popping them off later, putting them in a Ziploc to where on the weekends, especially, you know, if I have a big work day that Saturday or that Sunday, or if I'm selling vegetables on that weekend or something like that, I can eliminate that whole step of having to, number one, think of what I'm going to cook. I'll just know I've got biscuits I can cook. And number two, I'll eliminate that step of having to make those homemade biscuits. And a lot of uh, market gardeners that I've noticed, they do a lot of things around their gardens to save them time. Like, you know, trying to figure out how many minutes does it take to walk from your house to your garden, from, you know, moving your shed near your garden so that you're not taking all these steps to go look for tools all the time. There's a lot of, of things you can learn, you know, to kind of make your gardening more efficient. Well, I'm also trying to convey that into my life because what keeps me from even being able to go out of the house to walk to the garden to even go get my tools is I have to get breakfast cooked for a family, you know, and I have to do all the chores that I need to do to help my husband and to be able to even walk outside. And if I can start streamlining some steps with that and doing some things to make my life easier, uh, I need to do those. And I need to start working on them now while it's January, getting to February, you know, here in these, these couple of months that I have before uh, it really gets going, you know. So to me, with the way we live and what we eat, we love biscuits. To me, that's one step that I can take to eliminate a lot of time and a lot of uh, work later is to go ahead tonight while I have some time and just make a big batch of biscuits. I've done a few things in my life that's not necessarily on videos, but I've done a few things in my life lately in the same vein. I sat down uh, not too long ago and worked on taxes. I worked on everything that I think I'm going to need to turn in for our taxes this year. I went ahead and figured and projected for this year and next year tax money and did all that kind of stuff so that, first of all, there's no surprises when April comes. You know, I'll know what, what's going on and I'll be prepared for that. But second of all, so that I don't have to think about it when gardening time is going on. All I have to do is kind of wait on the things to come in the mail, check off those as they come in. And I've got all my receipts for my business expenses. I've already made copies of them. I've done all kind of stuff. Uh, it took me a good four or five hours, believe it or not, you know, but it always does to get ready for taxes. But I went ahead and did that uh, over the New Year holiday. And that feels so good. And little by little, I'm just trying to do things like that to make my life easier this spring so that I can just enjoy every day that I'm out in that garden. I can enjoy the whole process and I'm not stressed out by things like taxes when I really want to be just enjoying my garden, when I really want to be putting up food and things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today and I hope you enjoy watching me make some biscuits. I'll share the recipe with you, be honest with you. I don't usually measure anymore, but that's the thing. When I go to do it, I'm just going to put a bunch of flour in a bowl 
cut in some shortening until it gets the right consistency and then go with it from there. I'm really, this isn't a cooking video. I'm just telling you a, a, the simple recipe I use to make biscuits and you can just expand it to your needs, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. This video has been all about saving time and I'm trying to save myself some time by doing these biscuits tonight, get them in the freezer, flash freeze them and put them in Ziplocs. Then after that, all I have to do is walk in there on a Saturday morning and pop them out of the Ziplocs and put them on a baking sheet and bake them. So it'll help me a whole lot. Hope you enjoy watching. I'm just starting with a good amount of self-rising flour. I'm not gonna try to do them all in one batch. I'm just gonna do like a large batch and then another large batch. Go ahead and pour all that in there. The ratio is two and a half cups of flour to three quarter cups of shortening. I happen to have butter shortening right now that was open, so I'm just using that. You can use regular white shortening, but I'm going to use my butter. Um, now, my measurements are not what I'm telling you because I'm just doing a big bowl of this. I'll cut it in with a fork, and when it gets to kind of a mealy texture, I'll know it's done. You just cut the shortening in with a fork until it gets kind of mealy. There may be bigger pieces that are in there that you can kind of see like that. Some of these bigger pieces, but that's just a shortening. It's fine. Those will melt and make your biscuits taste really good. But you just cut that shortening in with a fork. Just kind of go at it like that until you work it in and it gets kind of mealy. You can see the difference between the regular flour that was in my bowl and the one with the shortening cut in it. It's just a lot more coarse. You don't wanna to cut too much shortening in to where it's all kind of sticking together and it's very, very coarse because that your biscuits will taste okay, but they'll be so crumbly that you just won't be able to enjoy them. If you kind of cut it in like that until it's just about that texture, just about like that, then when you add your milk and all and you roll them out and you cut them into biscuits, they'll be great. The way I do it is I just take a little of my shortening and rub it on my counter, and then I take some flour and put it on top of that, and it makes it to where the biscuit dough will not stick to my cabinet. Okay, I'm gonna add evaporated milk. I'm gonna probably go with this whole jar because, well, let me just see how that does. Yeah, I have so much flour. I'm going to go ahead and use the whole jar. And if I need more, I'll just get regular milk out of my refrigerator. I know this is very uh, a loose way of doing this, but I'm just showing you the basic concept. Okay, the dough's about ready. Uh, you just want it till it kind of binds together and it'll pull away from the sides of the bowl. And then you can just spread it on your counter and we're going to cut it into biscuits. I'm just gonna take part of the dough. There's no point in dumping it all out. I'm just gonna work with part of it at the time. That'll do. I like to put a little shortening on my hands. And then you wanna sprinkle a little flour on your dough so you can work with it, get a little on your hands. And with this dough, you don't work it very hard. You don't have to let biscuit dough rise. You just wanna do it three or four times. And then just start flattening it. I don't wanna push it too hard, but you wanna get it about an inch thick. Okay. This is my little biscuit cutter. Got it for 50 cents at a St. Vincent de Paul thrift store. I just love it. And I'm just putting them over here in a, on a cookie sheet. I'm gonna stick the whole cookie sheet in my freezer and just let them freeze. All the little extra parts you can just leave laying there. We're gonna bind those together in a minute.
wanted to go ahead and work with what I had before I added anything else. I want, Cause I wanted to tell you how many biscuits that first little batch would make. This one, we're gonna shove in here and make its own little biscuit out of it. A little bit, a little bit taller than the others, but it's okay. Okay, that that I put out there just now made the four, eight, made 11 biscuits. So that's about what I make when I use two and a half cups. So that's probably about what that was. All right, I'm gonna continue on. I'll let you know in a little bit how much this one bowl made. All right, that little effort from that one bowl of flour and shortening of milk made 34 biscuits. I'm gonna have three trays of them that I put out in this freezer. I did another batch. So I ended up with 67 biscuits all together. Pretty happy about that. I kept four in the house to cook for breakfast in the morning. The rest I put out here. So that's a pretty good job. And it's gonna save me a whole lot of time on the backside for just a few minutes of work tonight. So I can tick that off my list too. Well, I feel like I got a lot of things done today. I'm very happy. I got the sand in the buckets. I got the water hose situation figured out. I got the shelves put in my washroom. Um, I got the high tunnel moved to a new spot, so hopefully it'll, it'll be a lot easier to load if I do sell it. I got the biscuits made. I, I don't know. I got all kind of things done. I feel good. I feel satisfied today. Hope I'll sleep good tonight, and I'll just hit it again tomorrow. And I'm going to really try before the end of January to complete my list to get all the things done that I can get done before spring, to think about the things I need to think about so that I can really just sit back and enjoy this garden season. Thank y'all for joining me. I appreciate it. My name is Lainey from Camp Joy Farms. Please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can follow all my videos. Thank you so much and bye-bye.